Hello. Hello everyone and welcome to Mead and Cheese. Yes, um, I'm joined here with Corey, I'm Tom. I'm Corey, I'm DJ Mead. And I'm Cheese. Yeah, uh, so um, I've prepared a list of notes. I thought we could play two truths and a lie about Mead. What do you say? I think that's a really great way to introduce this really great show. I agree, okay. And I think it's going to be a very long night. <laughs> Okay, let's go. Two truths and a lie about mead. Here's your first fact. Mead is believed to be one of the oldest alcoholic drinks ever invented. Yes. Your next fact. Recent discoveries suggest that mead was originally created with maple instead of honey. And your third fact. A mead that contains fruit is known as a melomel. Hmm. Which one do we think is the lie? I think the first one's a lie. Because I think there's older alcohols in mead. You think the first one, Maddie? Yeah, because they had al- alcohol in, like, caveman times. Yeah, that would have been mead. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know if they would have called it mead. They might have called it something else. Okay, well, I think it's the... What was the middle one again? Recent discoveries suggest that mead was originally created with maple instead of honey. I think it's that one. You think it's that one? Yeah. Maddie, you would be 100% correct. Oh I made that up. I, that oh is a complete God. lie. I feel like a genius. Yeah. By the way, um, just so you know, Corey is a mead expert. Um, if he wanted to, he could probably write a PhD on mead, just on like like one bottle of mead as well, not like this mead in general. Like he, He's got a very specific knowledge. He's... Yeah, he knows a lot about mead. I wouldn't call myself an expert. I tried to make a homebrew mead once and... Uh, completely fluffed it it was um yeah he's also he's also very humble yeah probably the worst mead that anyone had ever made we um i think it was more similar in composition to rat poison than mead so uh, yeah we, we ended up flushing it down the toilet unfortunately but yeah so i said earlier that mead was one of the oldest alcoholic drinks ever invented, and yes. you didn't believe me, did you, Tom? Well, I thought, like, if you went to, like, I don't know, any other country, they wouldn't they all have their old, own, like, oldest alcohol ever? Okay, well, I've got some facts written down here about <laughs> mead being one of the oldest drinks. So, pottery vessels dating from 7000 BC were discovered in northern China that showed chemical signatures consistent with the presence of honey in fermentation. So mead. So mead. Yes. Seven thousand BC. Seven thousand BC. Mead has been going since seven thousand BC. And they found residues of mead in Europe dating between two thousand eight hundred and one thousand eight hundred BC. That's mad. That's yeah. really that's really mad, isn't it? Um, of course, uh, mead and cheese in the studio at the moment. We literally have some mead and cheese, we not do, out. Yeah. But they're on decoration and display. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's an interesting looking bottle, I'm not going to lie. Uh, it looks like a fancy wine. It's, yeah, so um, I've got written down about yeah. about the mead. So this mead is Lime Bay Winery's traditional mead. Oh, shout out to them. And uh, you can get it on Amazon for eight ninety nine. Oh, okay, that's not too bad. That's yeah. cheaper than a bottle of rosé. Yeah, yeah, and it gets prime delivery as well. So next oh. day, if you want a bottle of mead, check it out. Yeah, like literally, like it's probably a really good way just to get your drinks in Emerald. Just get it on Amazon, get mead. That's quite a fair price as well. Eight ninety nine is not a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, I don't know anywhere you can buy it in person around here. So if anyone does know, yeah, shout out to anybody that is selling mead in Leicester. Um, these guys are desperate for. It. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. you would like to sponsor this show and you're a mead dealer or a mead brewery, you can come and on the show and. Tell us about your business. Yeah, of course. Uh, just remember to uh, tweet us at Demon FM if you want to comment on this interesting show of mead and cheese. Um, we're going to put a poll out. What's better, mead or cheese? Oh, oh, oh! Is is mead that that popular to beat cheese? I don't know if it is. I said I've never tried mead. That's Once it. you try mead, I feel like you you might you know. I th- the thing is about mead and cheese, I think they complement each other a lot. They complement each other a lot. So it's not like, 
it's not like who's it's sometimes it's like that question who's better mum or dad but if you've got a good mum and dad they, they, it's like i can't choose i i could not say what i prefer mead or cheese because they complement each other so much yeah it's like uh, you've got the sweetness of the mead and the tanginess of the cheese exactly yeah. i didn't I could... really think cheese was tangy but anyway. yeah it's like it's like when you've got a pineapple pizza which i will say is the best kind of pizza it is the best yes yeah yeah yeah, so next time you're having a pineapple pizza, make sure you order a bottle of mead of from course. Amazon from eight ninety nine, and, you know, take your pizza game to the next level. Now, I've just tasted some mead, and I have to say, I'm converted. I'm actually converted. It tastes like liquid honey, and it, it doesn't yeah, even, like, it burn. It is really nice. It's great. And it's, it, uh, yeah, you can drink it really quickly, though, so it's a bit... It's dangerous, careful, yeah. It's a bit yeah. like rosé. Mm. And the thing about mead is, it is a drink you can have all year round. It is definitely a drink you can have all year round. But this time of year, mead can't taste nicer. It's Christmassy, you know, it's a perfect present. And I think someone in the studio has a Christmas story about mead. Yeah, so uh, my cousin Amber has um, ordered me a Christmas spiced bottle of mead. And uh, I'm very much looking forward to it. It's also from the Lime Bay Winery as well. Not sponsored. Yeah, we, we, we do not have a mead sponsor or a cheese sponsor. So if you are a cheese company Yet. or a mead <laughs> company, get in touch. I expect my email box will be full. I expect Corey's email box will be it's full. Be flooded, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be flooded. Um, anyway, so... I believe we are the biggest radio show in the UK about mead and I cheese. I think we're the only radio show ever to have discussed, not have it, not even have a theme show, but to actually <laughs> mention mead. I think we're the biggest show ever. Um, so that's saying something. And you said like... Yeah, don't fact check that. Yeah, don't but, fact yeah. check that. But Just believe us. Believe us. But Corey said that in his facts that 7,000, what is it, BC, was when they first discovered mead? That's when, uh, yeah, that's when they think um, honey and fermentation dates back to, which is the basis of mead, yeah. So just have a little think about how long ago that was, and we are the first radio show about mead. Oh that God. is, yeah. like, the reason we're doing this is to promote something what's not had enough promotion in recent years and mm. ever, because no one's yeah. done a radio show about it. And so, we're here to change that. So we've been speaking a lot about mead, but that's only one half of the show. So I was thinking we could do two truths and a lie about cheese. That's a brilliant segue. That's a brilliant segue. Let's talk about cheese. So, are you ready for your three facts about cheese? Sure. Let's go. <laughs> Fact number one, according to a survey from Food Hub, the UK's favourite cheese is mozzarella. Fact number two, the Wensleydale Creamery almost went out of business until the release of a very successful licensed Wallace and Gromit Wensleydale. And fact number three, George Orwell's favourite cheese was Stilton. I think it's the middle one again. You think it's the middle one? Yeah. I think it could be George Orwell. I, I, I do, I get that. I, I think he would like Stilton, but I don't think that's real. I don't, I think you that's don't think Stilton's real? <laughs> no, I don't think <laughs> it's George Orwell's favourite cheese. I don't think he ever like mentioned his favourite cheese. So you're both wrong. Okay. The, um, the lie was that the UK's favourite cheese is mozzarella. Food Hub did do a survey, and um, the results will surprise you. The UK's favourite cheese, voted by 40% as the favourite, was... The processed cheese slice. Oh, that's not that's not a favourite. You literally were telling me this yesterday. I was, and yeah. I, and I and it's totally like the thing is, I don't believe it. Like I get it, but I don't believe it because mozzarella is so much nicer. Oh my god, it is. It's so it's good. So much nicer. You can eat that stuff raw. Camembert so, is so much nicer. Camembert, <laughs> camembert, camembert, berry, whatever. You know, it all means the same thing. Stilton is no Stilton's not nicer than. Plastic cheese. Plastic cheese is definitely nicer. No, plastic well, if you still, cheese number fact, one. Stilton has an acquired taste. Yeah. You know, it's it's mouldy and, you well, know, it's more old people cheese. George Orwell liked it. And, uh, Tom, you said you didn't think he ever spoke about his favourite cheese, but he actually did. In an essay he wrote in 1945... <laughs> in an he wrote an essay about wrote, his favourite cheese. He wrote an cheese. essay called In Defence of English Cooking, where okay. he said that Stilton was his favourite cheese... 
followed closely by Wensleydale. I mean, to be fair, I've never had Wensleydales, wouldn't I? Oh, Wensleydale's lovely. It's great. <laughs> Wensleydale. Yeah. yeah, the Food Hub survey really shocked me when I first saw it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, up next, we've got Don't Stop Me Now, because we definitely need to stop these guys talking about mead and cheese. Well, welcome back. Um, first of all, I want to tell you where, how the poll's doing. 66.7% of, of people who have voted in this poll believe mead is better than cheese. That's a very surprising result. Bear in mind, not a pe- lot of people drink mead. <laughs> no, I'm very surprised myself, and I absolutely love mead. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think maybe we have just pulled in quite a lot of mead. Um, the mead, mead enthusiasts. Yeah, mead enthusiasts. It's like you say, we're the only mead show on the radio, as far as we're aware. So, oh, shout out to my sister Bridget, who is uh, her favourite cheese is brie, which is nice. also my favourite cheese. And yeah, and I would like to just not. Do, is it, we're not sponsored by Bistro Pierre. No, but, but they do do a really good r- r- deep fried brie. Yeah, which yeah. I recommend everyone goes and tries. They don't do mead, I don't think, but they do do a nice selection of wines. They do, yeah, yeah. But no mead, unfortunately. Maybe maybe after this show they might consider putting that <laughs> onto their selection of drinks. Nothing wrong with a good wine. No, no, but then again, there's nothing wrong with a good mead. No, no. no. <laughs> it's a shame you can't get it many places, but yeah, what are you going to do about that? So, your favourite cheese is brie. Yeah, my favourite cheese is brie, and I think I also I love mozzarella, Um and I also, my least favourite cheese will be Stilton, but I can force myself to eat it and then like kind It's too mouldy. It. It's like Shropshire Blue. I don't yeah, like looking yeah. at it. Yeah. I don't like looking at it. But, you know, I had, I did force myself to eat that Bistro Pierre. Oh, don't force yourself to eat it. And it was okay. It wasn't as bad I, as I expected. So, Maddie, what is your favourite cheese? <sighs> See, that's a difficult one. I'm, I'm a more of a mature cheddar kind of girl, cool. but it has to be grated, not sliced. Um, but the same with uh, Red Leicester. I love those two cheeses, especially when they're like put in a macaroni and cheese or something. It mm. tastes so good. Or a bechamel sauce. You know what I mean? Like yeah, if, yeah. With, a, with like lasagna. I like cheese with things. I don't like cheese mm, separate. I, don't, I can't eat cheese by itself. I just think that's weird. Unless it's cream cheese. Or mozzarella. You do eat or, mozzarella. To be fair, mozzarella raw yeah. is delicious. So, But my yeah. favourite cheese cheese, I'll have to say, is boursin, which is the cream cheese that you have with crackers at Christmas. Nice, nice, nice. What's your favourite cheese, Corey? I would have to say Red Leicester. One of the finest things to come out of Leicester that is not called Demon Media. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's still red, though. Both things are red. That's true, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> no, yeah, I love a bit of Red Leicester. I'm also quite a big fan of, um, if I remember what it's called, Parmesan. Parmesan's pretty good, yeah. Especially if you whack it on a Italian pasta and stuff like that, oh. it's like a carbonara. That's always quite nice. I've got a great story about Parmesan. It was the first time I ever had it. I went to my friend's house for for dinner and his mum had made spaghetti bolognese and um, they put out this little tray of Parmesan and um, they all put on like the tiniest amount and I just threw it all on. <laughs> Sounds like me, to be fair. I got dirty <laughs> looks, but it was uh, it well, was no, worth it. You want to pile it on, you want to taste the yeah, parmesan. You, you so got to, like, exactly. So you've got to let the cheese take over. Like, exactly. And any sort of food, you've still got the cheese take over. With a sip of mead after. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, up next we've got uh, Whenever You Need Somebody by Rick Astley. Hope you enjoy, guys. You're back with Mead and Cheese. Um, shout Hello. out to Andrew and Sylvia who are having their dinner right now. Um, Sylvia said that her favourite cheese is Stilton, and Andy said his favourite was um, yeah. I want to say Yabu Yabu, but I'm gonna. Pr- I know that's not right. How right the pronunciation, and I'm probably gonna get laughed at later. Um, we still have a poll up. It's fifty fifty at the moment on at Demon FM on Twitter. Um, Mead and cheese. It's fifty fifty. What are you guys thinking? It's a, it's a good split, isn't it? Um, I'm rooting for Mead. It's the underdog. I'm rooting for cheese at the minute because I'm quite hungry, but I'm not thirsty. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, it's Christmas time, so there's a lot of cheeses at the minute in um, shops. There's more cheese than ever. Yeah. Um, so if you're getting a Christmas cheese selection, make sure you get a bottle of mead 
You could even give that as a Christmas present. That's a good Christmas present idea if someone, instead of getting them a box of Shout celebration. Shout out to Andy and Sylvia to te- tick this off uh, Tom's Christmas list because he's obviously desperate for mead. <laughs> <laughs> who isn't? Yeah, yeah who, who isn't? Um, anyway, so I would like to go to a bit of story time now okay. of your first experience with cheese and then your first experience with mead. Um, being sure the expert, Corey, you start. Do you want cheese first or mead first? Should we go, you know what? Mead. We'll go mead first. Because we'll we've, mead we've first. talked so much about cheese this evening. I'm sort of... <laughs> it's like... Let's go on to mead. Right. So mead. I believe my first experience with mead was... Um, my mum and dad went out somewhere. And they brought back some mead. And me and my brother just had a few bottles of all different flavours. And it was very nice. It was... Um, yeah, it changed my life from that moment. Since then, I knew, yeah, I'm a mead drinker now. And was that's it, all I'm ever going to want to drink. Was it the first drink you ever had? Mead? Um, no, it wasn't. I would probably say um, milk was the first drink I ever had. <laughs> <laughs> oh I, meant al- I meant alcoholic drink. <laughs> oh, yeah, that makes more sense. Uh, no, I'd, I don't know. Probably cider. Cider would be the first. Yeah. See, I mean, if I remember correctly, my, I always remember Red Leicester being a big part of my childhood. It's still one of my favourite cheeses. Mm. You know, putting it on um, like a pasta sauce or like, particularly um, Suzanne, my grandmother, she does this very lovely bolognese, but then she whacks a load of uh, Red Leicester on top and just makes everything so good. Love it. But my first experience with mead is literally just right now. I've had a little sip and it tastes just like honey. It's really weird. Yeah. And it mm. doesn't even burn. It's no, it doesn't taste like alcohol at all. It's very weird. <laughs> no, no. You get through a whole bottle without realising you've actually had a sip of alcohol and then that's when it hits you, you know? Yeah. yeah. My first experience with mead was before the show. Um, we had like a little pre-cheese and mead session where Corey brought <laughs> some of his honey mead. Um, so this week's bead of the week is honey mead. That that what it's called? Yeah, the uh, the Lime Bay Winery traditional honey mead. Yeah. And yeah. You that... can get it on Amazon for £8. It's also on Prime delivery. But you can probably get it from other services as well. Um, shout out. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. each week on this show, we're going to have a mead of the week and a cheese of the week. So this week's mead is obviously the honey mead. And this week's cheese is baby bell. And squeezy cheese. And squeezy cheese. Yeah, squeezy cheese. Because they didn't think to get anything a bit more interesting. Well, <laughs> baby bells are a very valid... F- and they come in the traditional wax, what, you know, cheeses are traditionally made in. Yeah, and I'd say the squeezy cheese is quite interesting, because I bought it from... Let me get my notes up. Well, squeezy cheese is a modern take on cheese. I got it from Hollywood Candy on Charles Street in Leicester. So... If Shout you want out to, buy your to own. Hollywood can- uh, American Candy. Hollywood Candy <laughs> on Charles Street. Yeah. I got the baby bells from Lidl, so <laughs> if you if you want to like have a really long walk around Leicester, you can go to Lidl and get your baby bell, and then um, go to Hollywood Candy to get your cheese, squeezy, squeezy cheese. cheese. <laughs> and then if you order on Amazon your mead, around oh by the time you get back, your mead could be there waiting for you. That's true, yeah. It would take you a whole day to walk around Leicester, I think. Yeah, really most wouldn't. likely. <laughs> <laughs> you really wouldn't. So obviously we've got at the moment, we've got the traditional honey mead. What other meads are there, Corey? Oh, there's there's loads of different meads. You can get black mead, which is mead with black currants. Oh, that sounds nice. Yeah, you could get red mead, which is like mead with cherries. Ooh. Uh, I quite liked the mead with rhubarb. Oh, yeah. so I'm not too keen on rhubarb. Never been a future fan of it. No? Well, no. my grandparents used to grow rhubarb. In their garden, and it's and it's a delicious, like fruit. I agree. Rhubarb's great. Spiced mead. Um, I'm not that great with spice, but if it's in a mead, I'll I'll tolerate it. Yeah. Anyway, we're gonna now cut to the next song, which is uh, I wish it could be Christmas every day, and of course these guys wish it was, so they could get mead, lots and lots of mead. I wish I could drink mead every day. Well, yes. We just had uh, um, Tim on the phone uh, who was talking all about how how brilliant mead is. We might have to have him on the show next week. Yeah, you'll say. But do shout out and do uh, ask us if you want any song requests. Um, We are taking them uh, as long as they are in our library, hopefully. (laughs) Um, But yes, no, uh, we had Tim on the line. Uh, He was talking about how healthy 
mead is and how it's got those microbial things. Yeah, very good for your body, according yeah. to him. Yeah, antimicrobial, he said. Yeah, yeah. Which sounds very, like, positive. Um, we, might have about, we might have him on the show next his, week. His favourite cheese was Stilton. Very That's nice. also my mum's favourite cheese. So my There's a lot of Stiltons. A yeah. lot of Stilton. I wasn't expecting that. Um, Jessica Jackson, who doesn't know what mead is, her favourite cheese is Canonberry. Canon. <sighs> Ca- it's camembert. The traditional camembert cheese she likes. Camembert. Um, shout out to her. We hope um, her knees feeling better. Yeah. Maybe she should drink some honey mead. Maybe that will make her recovery smoother. Like results may vary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're again. We're not we're, saying it's a cure, but we're saying it's. We're saying it might it might help. Some, might lift your spirits. Yeah, some cultures did believe that mead had healing abilities, actually, which is interesting. Um, Norse mythology, yeah, put a lot of emphasis on mead. Back um, over at our yeah. Twitter feed uh, at Demon FM, we've got a comment on our post from Amber Ross ninety nine. Uh, she says she doesn't like cheese; it's stinky. Not all yeah. cheese is stinky. That would be Amber Rose, my cousin. So shout out, shout to, out, shout to that, out to Amber. Yeah. Don't be afraid to comment uh, or even tweet us at Demon FM if you want to be uh, listen to some tunes that you'd yeah. like. We're taking recommendations and also song requests. Of course, we we've spoke a lot about Stilton. We're talking about blue we're cheese. We're talking a lot about Stilton, like a lot. So blue cheese, I don't like it. I don't trust anything that has anything to do with bacteria or. Well, that's yeah. the thing, though. That's or the whole fungus. point of cheese. You're supposed to eat it because it's good for you, even though it's got penicillin in. That's the whole point of that. But some of these mead varieties I was reading about earlier have, um, they seem a bit suspect to me. Have you ever heard of blue mead? No. No. So blue mead has um, fungus in it to make it blue, similar to like blue cheese. So that would be good to have with stilton like then. Like fungal, fungal bacteria, yeah. So blue mead with blue cheese... They, they they sound like they would go together. I don't know, actually, would you want them two together? Because if you're having blue mead and blue cheese, isn't it just a, a bit of a, just a full-on event? You know, surely you'd want, like, the mead to sort of complement the cheese rather than just be the same. I don't know if I've ever had any, any drinks with fungal bacteria in them, though. I, think we I should... mean, tequila has, like, in certain tequilas, there's, like, a worm or something in it. Really? Or, like, snakes. But that's, like, yeah. specific types of tequila. But... I've never heard anything with mould in it. Maybe, well, to be fair, um, shout out to Andy. Uh, he may be listening, may not be listening. Who knows? Um, but he makes damson gin. Ooh. Now, the way he does it is he lets the damsons basically rot with gin. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's apparently very nice. I didn't get to taste it myself, I don't think. But it's a family recipe, apparently. Uh, been passed down from father to son, father to son, I think. I'm not sure. Uh, that or grandson, I think. I'm not sure. I would be willing to give it a try, I think. Yeah. I'd well, we'll have, to, we'll have, to, get, we'll have try, to get Andy to on fair. at some point. Yeah. He's a whiskey connoisseur, to be fair. Not so much a mead man. But so. he might start drinking mead after listening to this show. Maybe. Um, yeah. I've got another shout out. Uh, Ewan, who is currently... Um, Driving to York, his favourite cheese is Red Leicester. Ewan is a musician of a band called Heart Sauce. He's very talented and his favourite cheese is Red Leicester. We do not actually currently know his favourite mead. That has not been confirmed. Um, but we would like to find out if he has a favourite mead. Please let us know if he's in the mead And club. of course, everyone listening, let us know your favourite meads and your favourite cheeses and we will compile the results. Exactly, exactly. I am currently on the Amazon page for Lime Bay Winery's Christmas Mead, which may be the perfect present <laughs> if you know anyone who likes mead. Yeah, so if anyone wants to get Corey a present this Christmas, um, do send him mead or cheese. It says says here, Christmas mead with festive spices, Mead blended with notes of festive spices to make a perfect mellow Christmas. Tipple. Oh, and the, and the bottle, um, the bottle does look really fancy. It does it look really fancy? Yeah, it mm. looks it looks nice. It looks like it looks a lighter shade than the mead we've got in right now. It looks like if if you was having like a Hollywood movie Christmas, that is one of the presents that will be in the 
under the tree. I think it, I think like I like to think think that Mead has a has a home under the Christmas tree this year in every house. Anyone here like mint? Mint? Mint. Well, I like mint sauce, like on like, you know, my roasties and stuff, would but not say, so much mint in general, no. Would you say mint is Christmassy? <sighs> I, I, uh, I mean, there's peppermints. Peppermints count, don't they? Because they're also selling a garden mead with mint, and it's got a slight green shade <laughs> to it. <laughs> That sounds also sounds beautiful. I believe we're going down the rabbit hole. Minty mead, <laughs> minty mead sounds nice. I've not tried it, but I'd love to give it a try. So so far we've got to try Christmas mead, mint mead, and um, what was the other one? Uh, blue mead. Blue mead, yeah. Oh, not the blue mead. Uh, back we- to our Twitter poll. Cheese. Who knew? Cheese is now in the lead now. Forty sixty. Oh dear. To I'm five votes. Not impressed. I know. If you do want to vote on our poll, it's going to be at Demon FM, at Demon FM, uh, on Twitter. Yeah, and we are Demon Mead. <laughs> We're not Demon Mead. We are Mead and Cheese. <laughs> you are Mead and Cheese, On Demon yes. FM. Uh, but yes, so, um, have you got any more notes, Corey? Have I got any more notes? You you know what, I wrote an A4 sheet of notes. <laughs> and <laughs> Was it you or was it Liz? It was, uh, it just was so me. listeners know, it Liz. Was, it was me, actually. Liz is Corey's girlfriend, I, I had, fiance. I did it all without any help, so I'm very proud of myself. Oh, okay, big congratulations to Corey. Thank you. And it's honestly the document. It's not. It's not just like a document. It's a good-looking document. He's got like different use of cool text. It's it's organised. It's very sophisticated because this man takes mead seriously. Yeah, it's got different fonts, and you know when you use more than one font, you're taking it. Yeah, to the extreme and not, serious, and not in a crazy way. It's like in a very sophisticated way. It's like obviously yeah, a good yeah. order to this. No comic sans on here. Yeah, there's no comic sans. But yeah, we were talking <laughs> about the food hub survey earlier. Um, yes, we were. Would you like to know more about the results of that? Yeah, go on. Because I, I said, it's, it's, it, I mean, I can't understand why people actually like fake cheese. It, I just don't like it, and it is just pro- it's heavily processed, and it's not it's not good for you. Yeah, it surprised me as well. I almost didn't believe it, but yeah, the food hub results. Processed cheese slice was the UK's favourite cheese with 40% of the votes. In second place was cheddar with 33%. Yeah. That isn't surprising. Uh, no. That's also my cat's favourite cheese, Daisy. <laughs> I've just learnt that information from my sister. Shout out to Daisy. Shout out to the cat, Daisy. Yes. Uh, in third place... And also place, Shishka. Should not also shout out to Shishka, which is uh, uh, Andy's and Sylvia's cat as well. Yeah. In third place, we have mozzarella... See, that should be way higher than yeah, 20%. Third. I'm just saying, mozzarella literally goes with anything. That and feta. For have you had feta on a pizza? I have not had feta on a it's pizza. It's fine. It's really good. I believe you. Yeah. It's yeah. actually more healthy. It's more healthier than mozzarella because it's less fattening. But Ooh. it tastes amazing. So it's like, we had it in Greece, didn't we, Tom? Yeah, yeah. It was really nice. It, it, like, and I didn't think it would go, but it does definitely go. I'll tell you what is great on a pizza. The fourth place cheese red leicester with 19 percent. my favorite cheese i think it should be a bit higher personally uh, especially when plastic cheese is coming in first yeah why is that it's just ew and then fifth place was halloumi with 18 percent. okay i can yeah, get behind, can get halloumi. behind halloumi. Yeah. Halloumi, that's, yeah. that's a good halloumi is my favorite cheese now thinking about it yeah yeah it's a very versatile <laughs> Switched out cheese from stilted. yeah no it still has never been my favorite cheese i just no challenge myself like once a year to have it so, some facts that came out of it. One in ten people said that they didn't like cheese at all. Oh, wow. And I said we had that comment earlier, didn't we, on the... On the uh... That makes sense, because not everyone likes cheese. It's not for everyone. Well, yeah. you know, a lot of people are lactose intolerant and stuff like that, which, you know, respect. But Kudos to you. I would hope that that one person who doesn't like cheese, I would hope they like me, so that at least they're getting one of the two things this radio yeah. show is about. And the same number of people, one in ten, also said that they believe that eating cheese before bed gives you nightmares. Oh, see, I don't think that's real. No, I think it's a myth. Because I've eaten plenty of pizzas that have cheese on. Oh, and I love gone a bit of cheese before bed. And it's sort of like, oh, that's quite nice actually. I've never had a nightmare when I've had cheese. I've I've never like knowingly done that. But let us know, do you think cheese yeah. gives you nightmares? Yeah. Or do, do you have any cheese nightmares? Yeah, <laughs> had any nightmares about any, cheese? Exactly. Just tweet us at Demon FM. Um, shout out to uh, Amber Rose, who's tweeted at us. Um, apparently, Corey has been lying. And uh, apparently she helped you out with the two truths and a lie. 
That is fake news. I received no help at all. <laughs> I might have received a little bit of help. I don't know. <laughs> my my memory's not that great. But I want to veer the conversation a little bit off of mead and cheese. Yes, oh. we do. Now, mead is like the granddad of all alcohol. All alcoholic drinks all stem from the great mead. So, Corey, you wanted to ask everyone... I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to ask, what is everyone's go-to drink when they go to the pub? Oh, yeah. okay. Well, I'm more of a cocktail queen myself. Cocktails. Ooh. Yes, I do like them. If there's not mead in that pub, I would definitely go, for, and, and obviously, like, most pubs aren't selling mead anymore because we're not in, like, the 1700s. No, I've, I've never been to a pub that serves mead. Yeah. No. Yeah, I mean, you belong in, like, the medieval times, <laughs> to be honest. Born in the wrong generation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, t- yeah, 200 years. <laughs> Music was better when everyone was playing the lute. <laughs> <laughs> but my go-to drink, w- w- when it's not mead, is probably a Malibu and Coke. You do like a Malibu and I Coke, I do yeah. love my coconut, sort of. I wonder if there's a coconut mead. Maybe. Maybe, possibly. What, yeah. We'll have to see. Yeah, we'll have to have a look. What You said you were the cocktail queen. What's your go-to cocktail? Oh, that's a good shout. Now, I do like a P.S. Martini. Mm. I do love them, especially the Prosecco shot. It's delicious. Yeah, but yeah. I can't say no to a tequila sunrise at the moment. I love it. Mm. Yeah, I'd, I'd like, I've really got into my tequilas in a big way at the moment. It's like, yeah. for you, it's me, but for me... It's tequila. Like, I love yeah. it. You have mentioned tequila. Like, I mean, loads. can't get mead in a pub, though. So that can't be my go-to drink. I would uh. probably say gin and tonic. Gin and tonic. What about margaritas? Because like, when we first met... Oh, th- yes. Now, this is a story. Me and Corey first met in a pub. and the first <laughs> Shout thing, out to Firebug. Shout out to Firebug. The first thing he said to me on this evening was, do you drink mead? <laughs> and I was like... No, I'm not medieval. Um, but what yeah. then happened later was he managed to drink how many honey margaritas? I think it was six, wasn't it? Yeah, it it was the only drink they had with honey in, and I thought, well, it's close enough to me. Close so I'll enough, have it. yeah. Yeah, because they didn't do mead and firebug, unfortunately, <laughs> but they did do honey margaritas, which are really nice. They are really good, yeah. Really, but they are expensive. They are quite expensive. Oh yeah, drink, no, they're seven yeah, pounds so, each. Yeah, yeah. So that. It can if you're only drinking honey margaritas on a night. It can be a very very expensive evening. Night. Yeah, and that yes. was a fun night. We had uh, we had honey margaritas, and then you came over to ours for pizza. If we you did. Remember. So yeah. we had the cheese yeah. as well. We watched, yeah, uh, Star Wars, Revenge of the Sith, wasn't it? It, it was, was your Revenge favorite of the film. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It is my favorite. Again, film. the shout out to Amber Rose ninety nine uh, at Demon FM DJ Mead and DJ Cheese. Uh, <laughs> doing great thank you ever so much to um amber that's lovely an update on the poll um mead has now taken a lead oh. that might have been because me and Corey voted for me yes <laughs> well i said if you do want to tweet us uh it's at demon fm on twitter uh you can also vote in our poll mead or cheese we'll see what happens it is, at the end it of the is show. A, it is a close fight. It is, it is a very I big fight at the moment. Yeah. I think it's the biggest fight on the internet so yeah. far yeah. between me and This is cheese. what everyone's talking Was about. Was it exactly. in the Twitter, like, what hap- what's happening section? Oh, no, it's not, but no, it, it, should, it, it should be. It should be, We'll yeah. be trending soon, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, as again, if you want to have any songs played out, do tweet us at Demon FM or uh, message us at Demon FM. Uh, so, yeah. We were talking about the night... DJ Mead met DJ Cheese. Yeah. Yeah, that was a very interesting night. So, again, so first thing Corey says to me is, do you like Mead? I'm like, I don't know what Mead is. Is that from Game of Thrones? Um, Yeah, so he managed to have, was it seven margaritas that night? It was a lot, wasn't it? I drank a lot. I I think I had cider and gin and... Yeah, margaritas. It had a lot more, and they're very wine. Ex- I think I had as well. You did have a glass of wine. Yeah, I had a few margaritas. They are nice. Um, I also had, I think, I had an espresso martini. Mm. To be fair, you do like espresso martinis. The other day, what I did to try and have a cheaper night. Um, this was on Maddie's birthday. I had a Coca Cola, and an A and E shot, which is like. What what's in an A and E shot again, Mad? I don't even know at this point. <laughs> it's like it's like tequila absent aftershock. 
something it's like a mixture of them three it's a nasty mix yeah it's yeah. a nasty mix and i mix that with my coca cola and i do one of them shots and that's a very fast way to get drunk if you are on if a you're on a cheap night yeah yeah, yeah. It, it, i won't recommend it as it's no. like it is disgusting. I think if you want a cheap night, mead, eight ninety <laughs> nine a bottle on Amazon it's is down the it. best way like, to go. Whoa. I must say again, we're not sponsored. No, we're not. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, no. but if Lime Bay want to hit us up with a sponsorship, <laughs> we would be perfectly happy to yeah. take it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We were we were talking about the night we met. Uh, we went back to yours, had pizza, watched Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, yeah, it was a good night. Um, and then what? What? Then we went to like a f- six course meal, as you do. Oh yeah, yeah. That first was a phenomenal time night. Week after, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. That's the first time I ever in my life has done a six course meal. Again, shout out to Bistro Pierre. Only twenty four pound mm. yeah, for yeah, a yeah. six course meal. That's yeah. pretty good. It's very fancy. Um, so what do we had? We had uh, mussels. That, you I, had mussels. I had steak. Yeah. Yeah. Very I had nice. the steak too. Yeah. We had yeah. To, yeah. Yeah, to be fair, I, they had the, this amazing chicken liver pate. And bear in mind, I hate chicken liver pate. I don't like pate at all. I don't know what it is. It's just the taste is not nice. But this was amazing. And the cheese that went with it as well, <laughs> limping, look, <laughs> looping back round to meat and cheese. The mm. meat, the cheese with the pickle with the um, chicken pate okay. was just so good. Yeah. yeah, it was like it's, I don't never I've never liked chutney, but this was just a lovely chutney. Exactly, mm. like that's another thing. What, what, it's not in our mead and cheese title, but chutney should also have an honorary mention because it does go really nice with cheese hmm. and mead. Interesting. Going back to the night we met, I um I showed off my belly dancing. Skills. Oh, oh yeah. my gosh, yeah, I forgot about did. that. I, was, yeah. I wasn't going to mention. We weren't that. we weren't expecting this. Bear in mind, this is like I have only met Corey once beforehand, and even then, you were quite drunk then. Yeah. Um, in fact, we both were, to be fair. But Corey comes into our flat. He wants us to watch Revenge of the Sith. We're like, fine, that's chill. We're hanging out. <laughs> Suddenly, he takes his shirt off and starts belly dancing. And we're like, yeah. we should probably get pizza. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, right. So, to my surprise, um, the pizza delivery man comes and Corey volunteers to go get the pizza. Oh, yeah. Without a shirt on. Without a shirt on. This is like yeah. mid October. I mean, this wasn't a dare or anything. He just did this. Yep. Legend, the, absolute legend. The amount of courage that took, <laughs> I have to respect that. <laughs> have you seen Shang Chi? Yeah, we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the I karaoke thought. scene where they're singing Hotel California. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Of I course. forgot they do that. To be yeah. fair, yeah, yeah. That's one of my favourite parts of the film. Like, I fell asleep through like when they went. Well, the middle bit, yeah. To be yeah. fair, it, it was a bit boring the middle bit, but oh, uh, no. yeah. I mean, who's excited for the new Spider-Man film? Oh, Are you gonna definitely. bring a, bottle, a whole bottle of mead and cheese there? I, I don't know if I could sneak a bottle of mead into a cinema. Well, it's, you work there, so it's fine. <laughs> I do work at Showcase, yeah, but I'm uh, I'm being a traitor. I'm going to see <laughs> the Odeon. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. So um, we were discussing just before uh, in the break that what superhero do you think is most likely to drink mead? And now, obviously, they all drink mead, but which one do you think <laughs> is most likely to drink? Well, mead? I definitely think Thor. I think Thor. Definitely. I, yeah. I think Thor's like the you know the hot, you know the one which is he was there when it was invented. He basically, yeah, uh, probably invented it himself. Yeah, Do you probably. Think Thanos drinks mead. I, I don't think so. Him. I see. I see him more of a uh, whiskey man. To be fair, whiskey. I I think Thanos drinks sake. Ooh, actually, yeah. you know what? No, I don't. That'd be Ultron. Ultron would drink Ultron. sake. Sake mm. isn't nice. It's just very hard hitting. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, Corey's never had sake. No. Yeah. So no, I haven't. So, cause so next week instead of uh, meat and cheese, it'll be sake and cheese. <laughs> sake and yogurt. Yeah. Oh my god, no, 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 I, no, no, no. I don't no. want yogurt. No. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah. So, what are people's opinions on the new Spider-Man film? I'm very excited. You are very excited? I yeah. I've not been to see many films on release day, uh, but this I make an exception for. That is that is totally fair. Are you excited to see the return of Doctor Strange? Doctor Strange, yeah, I guess so. I mean, I'm more excited for the possibility of the other Spider-Men returning. Oh, okay, because of like the is it the multiverse thing. The multiverse, yeah. The multiverse. To be fair, I'm more excited to see Tobey Maguire again yeah. on the screen. I mean, I know he's a bit of um, he's an interesting character nowadays, but back mm. in the day, he was 
the OG Spider-Man yeah. sort of thing. That's what everyone sort of clings to if, yeah. from our generation anyway and thinks, oh yes, Toby, that's our that's our guy. Not so much... I mean, Andrew Garfield is probably more later generations. Yeah. Um, mm. Like, I'd say, uh, not so much my cousin's age group, but maybe a little bit in the middle, in the middle sort of ish. You know what I mean? So yeah. is Toby everyone's favourite Spider-Man then? Uh, no, I think mine's Tom Holland. Yeah, I like Tom Holland too. I, but again, it's something about Toby, the original trilogy that Sam Raimi did. It, it's just so good. I find it a bit too scary when it came out. It was a bit too creepy for me. But the thing about what I like about Tom Holland is he looks the age of the actor he's playing. Yeah, yeah. You know, true. It, he do, like Toby Maguire looked a lot older than. <laughs> you Are you trying to, trying to make a thirty-year-old man look like he's sixteen? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it did not. Yeah, yeah. It, to me, it did not work. Because uh, I always thought that was in university when I was a kid watching that. But yeah. um, um, Tom Holland does look like the age he's playing, and is it makes it a bit more immersive, I think. But uh, I've only seen Spider Man Far From Home of the new. You've not seen Homecoming? No, I've not seen Homecoming yet. Uh, Skip that one. But I, I did like um, Far From Home, I did enjoy oh, that right. film. And I, I'm probably going to get roped into seeing this new one. Because mm. I'm not, see, the thing is, I'm not a massive Spider Man fan. I don't go out my way to watch them, but I, I watched. Um, I'm not sure if I watched Far From Home in the cinema or not. I can't remember. We didn't know. We watched yeah. it on Netflix. Yeah, yeah. Shout out. But I might watch this new one in um, cinema just because Maddie likes it. <laughs> I can't believe you said Tom Holland is your favourite Spider Man, and then you've not seen his best film. Which one? Homecoming. I was, oh, I mean, I, oh, Homecoming was. To great. be fair, Michael Keaton is very good in it. Yeah. Not dissing him for that, but I did think the plot was lacking a little bit no no it was just it wasn't it wasn't that great the thing about far from home though they take it out of america and they go that's to like true Europe. they need and to I, do that more and it's it's cool because you got you got all that like uh italian arch- architecture yeah but you also have jake gyllenhaal <laughs> oh he's all yeah. right he's, yeah i mean they didn't i don't think they did his character justice at the end when he becomes a villain but i think before that it was quite an interesting character yeah Nice. Nice, yes. You're joining us uh, with Mead and Cheese. It, the time is now 21 uh, minutes past eight. Um, and we're back. We're back talking about Mead and Cheese. Yeah, we mm. are Mead and Cheese. We're the weekly radio show which discusses all Mead and Cheese related news <laughs> and mm. problems, probably. Yeah, if you've got any any info you want to share about Mead and Cheese, let us know on the Twitter yeah. At, Demon at Demon FM, FM. Yeah. yeah. Also, just to shout out as well, um, for Chris, for our Christmas ca- charity this year, we're going to be raising money for um, Lester Marrow, which is stem cell treatment and stuff like that. So we have actually got it on our Instagram as well as uh, Twitter. So if you click the link, um, you can go to their Just Give page and donate there. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Donate to Lester Marrow and... If you're feeling merry for Christmas, get some mead as well. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, what I think you should do with your Christmas present, this is just an idea I'm thinking in my head right now, is have like a little wicker basket and fill it with that, uh, what is it called? But they fill it in like little bits. No, it's not hay, but it's like shredded paper. Fill, yeah. sh- fill it with shredded paper, get a few bottles of traditional mead mm. and maybe a can and berry cheese... <laughs> I swear to God, it's always like it's like camembert. It's you know H and V. It's honestly the amount of things that he gets wrong. <laughs> yeah, so you fill it with camembert cheese, a few bottles of traditional um, mead, and maybe like a Stilton, maybe a brie, maybe a um, red Leicester. So you, you can sort and and like a little wooden board, and maybe like a cheese chopping knife, mm. and there you go. You've made your own like Christmas present and i bet you once you've done that that is going to be better than any of the other like ones you can get from a supermarket that'll be a really nice selection we, i actually might make our own selection here um in a few weeks time just to show you an example of that and then you can copy it yeah the the mead it. and cheese hamper yeah yeah that's what that's what they're called hampers yeah so we, we're going to make a hamper in the next week or two yeah. and show you a good example of what a good christmas would look like well, a good Christmas uh, looks like, well... Meat and cheese. Meat and cheese, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Um, what are you planning on? Obviously, I'm not even going to ask you what you want for Christmas, but what are you planning on getting Liz for Christmas? Your fiancé? Wait, she could girlfriend? be listening. She could She's be. Definitely listening. She's but definitely what, you know, listening. But when do you want to get a significant other that isn't mead and cheese? Get, what do you want well, to get them? I can confirm it is not mead and it is not cheese. That's a sigh of relief from all women around the globe. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you should cancel whatever you've got and just get a mead. Just get a mead and cheese. And cheese. Get the hamper. Yeah. Get a... We could... Buy the hamper off me and yeah. give her that. Could I not make the hamper myself? You've just told me how to do it. We've just been talking about PhDs and masters and all that fun stuff. Uh, Tom, what were you saying about me and a PhD? Well, I'll just think, like, I'm a master's level student. So, um, and like, the thing is, after master's, the natural progression, not that I don't know if I'm going to consider doing this, is a PhD. But then we were just thinking. Because a PhD, you have to sort of like research an area what's not got a lot of research in. Guess where there's not been a lot of research done? <laughs> Mead. Mead. <laughs> I mean, Dr. Mead sounds pretty good, or Dr. Yeah. Cheese. So I could mm. do a PhD in Mead and Cheese. Oh yeah. God. I'll probably try and get link them both in together. But yeah, that, that that's, that's, just, that's just one idea what I could do with my future. Maybe you do a cheese flavoured Mead. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Or yeah. a mead flavoured cheese. Could I, I could just drop all like the filmmaking knowledge I got and just replace it all with mead knowledge. Which sounds That's a lot true, more yeah. useful to me. You could make a film exclusively about mead and cheese. I actually yeah, I yeah, I think I, I think I'm gonna try and do that. And hey, as a performing arts student I'd happily star in that film. But have you enjoyed uh hopefully our audience has enjoyed the first show of mead and cheese. Um, we've had quite a lot of interaction this evening on Twitter, which is very nice. It was very, very nice. engaging. Um, I just want to say just about our show, this is like probably the first time in history anyone's done a show on mead and cheese, and possibly mead. So it is like a groundbreaking show. So, you know, I hope you all enjoyed listening to something what possibly is like a once in a generation. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yes. Um, now, the votes are in. Mead has won. Mead nice. has won. Yes. Yes. Uh, 57.1% to 42.9%, uh, which is, a, it's a close, it's a close yeah, call. It's, it's a very close to call. To me, very close, that tells yeah. me mead and cheese work well together. Yes. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Um, But yeah. Yeah. I still can't believe you've got squeezy cheese right here. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we'll be, we'll be eating the squeezy cheese. It says cheese. microwavable as well. Yeah. well. That's not good for you. Well, Zero. T- what even is trans fats? Like, they. Well, it has no trans fats, so you've not got to worry about it. Yeah. But what is it? I do? am r- now worried about every itself having trans fats in. Well, trans fats. They're. Um. I think they're a type of fat that is really bad for you. Yeah. Um. So I think it's been illegalized in a lot of places. Um, oh, yeah, but I, I think it's still legal in some states in the US, but I'm not quite sure. Yeah. Well, anyway, we have been mead and cheese. Um, it's six get, minutes to nine. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to be doing this show for two hours every Friday from seven till nine. Any last words, Corey? Yes. Uh, last words, famous last words will be mead and cheese. <laughs> what a way to wrap up the show. Uh, Tom, last, any last words? Um, mine is, again, keep an eye out for the mead and cheese Christmas hamper. Um, we could possibly sell that. Possibly sell that. That 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 sounds like something we should probably sell. Yes. Well, thank you again for all our lovely listeners. Uh, do tune in tomorrow uh, for the open day. As I said, uh, give us a follow, give us a like, give us a comment, and don't be afraid to give us a shout out um, and ask for any uh, lovely recommendations. Mm. Anyway, we've been. Uh, Tom, Maddie and Corey and this has been Mead and Cheese and enjoy your Mead and Cheese tonight